Hey kids, it's Finn, and uh, I want to apologize because it's been a while since I've done a video on an actual topic. I've been in this, this slump that uh, has me under the impression that I need to feel up to it in order to do a video on a topic, to do a video outside of me just complaining about my life. Upon reflecting on it for a little bit, I realized I never feel up to it. I just have to make a concerted effort, a decisive action to make these videos. Um, because if I waited until I felt up to it, I would never make them. So. This video is going to be a Finn's problem with food, and so I want to give the trigger warning, um, as usual, that if you have issues with food, with eating, with disordered eating, um, with even mentions of it, um, do yourself a favor and not watch this video. So, yeah, uh... Teeth have always been an issue for me, um, an ongoing issue, especially because I have an eating disorder. It's like this compounded thing that is self-sustaining. So let me give some background about my relationship with my eating disorder and with my teeth and how those two things intersect. So I started having disordered eating when I was 11 years old. Started pretty early. Um, by the time I was in high school, I uh, was under 90 pounds. And I wear my weight really well, both when I'm underweight and when I'm overweight. When I was 200 pounds, I never looked it. And it's the same for when I was, you know, under 100. Um, I'm 5'8", so I don't know what the BMI for that is, but it's probably low 20s. And so, yeah, I was thin, and I told my mom that I had an eating disorder in the hopes that I could get some kind of treatment because I felt very much out of control. Uh, and she was under the misguided assumption that she could take care of this matter in-house, that she had the capacity to help me in the way that I needed to be helped. She was wrong. Um, instead of seeking treatment, she forced me to eat, which invariably caused more issues because I, being the ever obliging child that I am, I'm very good at de-escalation, at minimizing friction. And so I figured we could both get what we wanted. I would continue to eat to pacify her and later purge it to actualize my own wants and needs for control over my bodily autonomy. Yeah, that continued for a little bit, for a while. I mean, I still purge, so it never stopped. But, uh,. It got real bad sophomore year, where I was like throwing up, you know, upwards of 10 times a day. Um, like every time I had any little thing, like even water, I was, I was trying to purge it. And so you could see where some issues might lie as far as dental care. Um, at this point, I wasn't taking supremely good care of my teeth, especially not considering that I was purging every day, multiple times a day. And so, one day, I went to the dentist and had 30 cavities. It was so fucking abrupt. Like, six months earlier when I went to the dentist, my teeth were fine. The next six months later, 30 cavities. And so, it was a very stressful series of events. I am grateful that my parents were able to afford 
getting my teeth fixed and supporting me through that. Um, but it is an expense that was avoidable had I been treated. And along with the money, the, the trauma that it has invariably imparted upon my entire existence is almost immeasurable. I feel like maybe if I had some kind of intervention while my eating disorder was in its infancy, while things weren't that bad, that I could have been helped. But, you know, life goes on. So, at this point, my mom was understandably upset with me for not taking care of my teeth. And she wasn't aware that I was purging, of course. But she thought I was doing something very wrong. Um, she then found out that I was purging later. And it became a game of cat and mouse. She, she was so vigilant. She was obsessed um, with finding out when and where I was purging. Um, and that there's a whole... I don't know, body of stress surrounding just being in the bathroom and people knowing that I'm in the bathroom uh, and wanting privacy, which I realize is understandable because I have an eating disorder, but my privacy was never respected even before that. I remember times where my mom would go through my mail and stuff, so it was never respected. So my mom was really upset with me for not taking care of my teeth and she kind of has this way of using scare tactics um, in order to get what she wants you to do out of you. Uh, and so when I was a little kid, she told me that if I kept biting my nails, I had a really nervous habit of biting my nails, um, that my nails eventually wouldn't grow back. And so I stopped biting my nails. It definitely works to scare the shit out of your kids to get them to do what you want them to do. Um, but sometimes, using fear to get someone to do what you want them to do can cause a good deal of harm on top of the manipulation. She told me that now that my teeth are fucked up, they're just permanently fucked up. I just, I messed up for life. I entirely fucked up my mouth and it's all my fault and there's nothing I can do about it. And so hearing that as a high schooler, I was like, well, this shit doesn't matter, and I don't really even expect to live much beyond 30. Why should I even take care of my teeth? Why should it even, even fucking matter at all? So, I just kind of gave up. I was not at a good point then. Um, that was around, what, sophomore, junior year, where I just burned out completely. Um, I went from a 4.1 GPA to a, what, 3.0, 2.9, it was pretty bad. It wouldn't be until I got out of the house where I was going to college that I began to kind of take hold of my own life and the course of my life. And so I was able to eat the way that I wanted to eat, work out whenever I wanted to work out, purge if I needed to purge. Um, it was actually quite reassuring to be able to do what I wanted to do with my body, even if it was harmful, because I just felt like I had no control whatsoever. And in that, I decided, you know, even if I don't plan to, to live much beyond 30, what's the harm in trying to take care of my teeth? Um, at least they won't get any worse. Even if I can't do anything to make them better, at least they won't get worse. And so I started taking care of my teeth and um, surprise, surprise, they got fucking better. It's, it's crazy what things that are kind of spoon fed to you that you just fucking believe. Your teeth are living tissue. So if you take care of them, they will get better. And it's just baffling to me that uh, I believe that 
my teeth would never get better. And I probably lost a lot of headway feeling that way for so long. Over the course of the next almost decade, I took care of my teeth and while we weren't, you know, destitute, we weren't like so poor that like, you know, I'm not eating and stuff. I mean, I'm not eating on purpose, but uh, we're not starving. Um, we did live below the poverty line and so dental care, dental health insurance, that was something that was, you know, kind of back burner shit if you couldn't afford to pay mortgage or something. Um, so that was something that kind of went on the back burner. Um, and sometimes I would have insurance, sometimes I wouldn't. Uh, and those times just didn't coincide with times that I could go to the dentist, that I had time to go to the dentist, that I was up to going to the dentist because, you know, depression is a fucking son of a bitch. Let me tell you, it keeps you from doing a whole lot of things that you could be doing with your life. And so I ended up not going to the dentist for over seven years, like between 2000, what, 2011, really 2009, between 2009 and 2019, because I literally just went to the dentist last month for the first time in pretty much a decade. It's been a long time, guys. It's been a long ass time. I mean, I think I got a cleaning maybe in 2012, but I kind of just remember getting something filled. I don't remember actually getting a cleaning. The last time I remember getting a cleaning was when I was 19. Um, so yeah, the, the lapses in insurance, the mind numbing depression, the lack of funds, you know, all those things kind of contributed to me not seeing a dentist for a very long time. And when I went to the dentist this last month, I was actually elated to find out that I had two cavities. I only had two cavities. And, and not going to the dentist for a decade, it's assumed that you're going to have some, some fucked up shit going on in your mouth. And for me, it wasn't that bad because I do take special care of paying close attention to my teeth and my mouth. Um, when I notice there's something going on, if I have any kind of pain, I go ahead and get it checked out. I'm brushing, flossing, um, using mouthwash, doing really all I can to take care of my teeth. And if this is at all helpful, I'll give you an idea of what I do to my teeth um, daily to, you know, keep my shit together. But first off, I use, you know, one of those, like, intense, like, burning mouthwashes just to get, like, any, like, residue, um, any food particles, you know, out of my mouth. Uh, then I brush my teeth with Philips Sonicare. Um, I've heard mixed reviews between using Oral-B or using Sonicare, um, between like the square brush and the round brush. I've heard that the round brush is better, um, but when I went to my dentist, she said that the Sonicare is better, in her opinion at least. That um, the way that the, the Sonic action works, you can actually brush your teeth without actually touching the surface of your teeth with the brush. Um, that's how effective it is. and so. Yeah, I, as far as toothbrushes go, they can, they can run really expensive. Um, my mom gave me this one, uh, and it has like these little attachments that come on and off. You have to replace them, you know, every few months. But yeah, as far as getting a toothbrush, you want to do soft bristles. If you're just doing, you know, regular manual toothbrush, you could get a um, $8 toothbrush that has batteries in it that will, you know, help be more effective. Um, I typically brush my teeth with the Sonicare and um, this Enamel Health toothpaste for, you know, two to three minutes. I used to use Arm & Hammer, but I heard that it was abrasive, and while abrasive toothpastes aren't necessarily bad, I do have um, issues with enamel, um, just enamel erosion from when I was purging all the time. Um, then 
I floss with Glide. This is a uh, flat, it's flat um, floss. Uh, I like flat floss more than round floss, and I hear that also round floss can damage your gums. And I do act mouthwash. It's better to use um, like fluoride mouthwashes at night because that's the best time for them to work their course to do all that they need to do to protect your teeth. Um, this is what's going to bring your teeth back. Um, taking care of your teeth, like brushing and flossing, that's good shit. But this is what's going to remineralize your enamel if you have enamel uh, erosion. Uh, and it's not, it doesn't burn your mouth. It doesn't uh, have alcohol in it. Um, and then, uh, on and off, I, I don't know if this works as well as I like in my mind think it does. Um, I have dry mouth and so I use this uh, dry mouth mouthwash to um, help with my issues with dry mouth. I just have, I have major issues with my mucous membranes not producing enough wetness like from my eyes to my mouth to my reproductive system. I just have major issues with not having enough lubrication. And so that's a thing that you can use for dry mouth. While I do think it's helpful, it's like every four hours you have to do it and I'm not gonna be doing it every four hours to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's what I do to take care of my teeth. I also have a water pick coming in the mail, an Aquarius water pick. It was on sale on Amazon. Um, I don't know if it's still on sale, but I got it for Prime Day. Uh, it was only forty dollars when it's usually ninety, so that was a that was a good deal. So yeah, that's what I do to take care of my teeth, and I brought my teeth back from Oblivion because I was in a bad spot when I was in high school. Um, but my teeth are relatively good now. Tomorrow I'm going to the dentist to get my cavities filled, and hopefully that will be the last of my cavities for a while because I intend to now that I have insurance. Um, and now that I have, I don't know, the mental bandwidth to go ahead and get shit done, um, I intend to continue going back to the dentist for my routine cleanings. And so hopefully, you know, having those cleanings will minimize any kind of issues that I might have into the future, um, along with my routine. But yeah, if you guys have any comments, any tips that I might have missed, anything that you use um, that helps your teeth, or anything that you want to talk about as far as teeth goes because I know um, a lot of people have that one nightmare where all your teeth fall out I don't know why that is like such a common phenomena but I know so many people that have that, that that same dream like even though we all have different types of stressors in our lives teeth seem to be a particular source of stress for a lot of people and I just think it's really interesting that um teeth in general, they're stressful. And so, yeah, let me know what nightmares you guys have because that's, that's always fucking cool. So hopefully this was helpful. If you have any problems with an eating disorder, with your teeth in general, with having insurance and being able to take care of your teeth, um, hopefully this was helpful. I'll uh, talk to you guys later.